Have you ever wondered why certain species live in specific locations, and not others? Welcome to the fascinating world of biogeography, a realm where the mysteries of life's distribution on Earth are studied and deciphered. This multidisciplinary field bridges the gap between biology and geography, helping us comprehend why species are found where they are, and not somewhere else. From the rainforests of the Amazon, brimming with a diverse array of species, to the barren, icy landscapes of Antarctica where only the hardiest of life forms survive, biogeography offers insights into these patterns of life distribution. But it's not all as straightforward as it appears. There's an element of mystery and intrigue, a myriad of unanswered questions that still baffle scientists. What factors influence these patterns? How have they changed over time? How will they evolve in the future? The quest for answers continues to propel this exciting field forward. So come along on this journey of discovery. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of biogeography. To understand biogeography, we need to take a journey back in time. It's the 18th century, the age of exploration and discovery. Adventurers and scholars alike are venturing into the unknown, pushing the boundaries of the known world. Among these intrepid explorers are naturalists like Charles Darwin, individuals driven by curiosity and a thirst for knowledge. Their goal? To understand the natural world and the intricate web of life that it houses. As these explorers traverse the globe they begin to notice patterns. Certain species are found in specific regions while entirely absent in others. They start to see a connection, a correlation between the geographical location and the distribution of species. From the unique wildlife of the Galapagos Islands to the distinct species of the Australian outback, a pattern begins to emerge. This puzzle of nature piqued their curiosity. Why do certain species live where they do? Why are some regions rich in biodiversity while others are not? These questions mark the birth of a new field of study, biogeography. Early biogeographers armed with their observations and questions started to hypothesize. They proposed theories attempting to explain these patterns. They considered factors like the climate, topography, and the history of the region. They pondered over concepts like isolation and adaptation. Their efforts were akin to assembling an intricate jigsaw puzzle each piece representing a species, a habitat, a climate condition. These early biogeographers were the trailblazers of this field. They laid the foundation, establishing the principles and theories that would shape the study of biogeography. Their work was not without challenges. They faced skepticism, limited resources, and the daunting task of making sense of the complex web of life on Earth. Yet, they persevered. They observed, they hypothesized, they tested, and they refined. Their relentless pursuit of knowledge, their meticulous observations, and their insightful theories paved the way for future generations of biogeographers. And so as we journey back to the present, we find ourselves standing on the shoulders of these giants. Their legacy continues to guide us as we delve deeper into the intricate world of biogeography. These early explorations laid the groundwork for modern biogeography. Over the centuries, several theories and principles have shaped our understanding of biogeography. Let's delve into a couple of these key theories that have provided us with valuable insights into why species are distributed the way they are. First, we have the theory of island biogeography. This theory, proposed by Robert MacArthur and E.O. Wilson back in the 1960s, suggests that the number of species found on an undisturbed island is determined by two factors, immigration and extinction. The more isolated the island, the fewer species tend to make their way there. But once they do, if the island is large enough, it can support a greater number of species and thus reduce the rate of extinction. Next, let's talk about the principle of competitive exclusion. This principle, also known as Gauss's law, states that two species competing for the same resource cannot coexist at constant population values. If two species appear to be in direct competition, the slightly more efficient species will dominate in the long run. This principle helps us understand why we don't often see two species occupying the same niche, these theories among others have been instrumental in shaping our understanding of biogeography. They've helped us answer puzzling questions like why certain species are found in some areas and not others, or why some regions have a higher biodiversity than others. They've shed light on the intricate relationship between species and their environment, and how factors like competition, isolation, and habitat size can influence the distribution of life on Earth. Keep in mind, these are just two of the many theories and principles that biogeographers use. Others include the theory of continental drift, the principle of limiting similarity, and the theory of evolution. 
each providing their unique insights and contributing to our overall understanding of the biogeographical patterns we see today. These theories and principles are the building blocks of biogeography. They're the tools that have allowed us to delve into the mysteries of life's distribution, and they'll continue to guide our exploration in the years to come. We've come a long way from the days of Darwin and early explorers. Indeed, the field of biogeography has been revolutionized by technological advancements. These modern tools, such as satellite imaging and genetic sequencing, have given us unprecedented insight into the intricate patterns and processes of life on Earth. Let's talk about satellite imaging first. This technology allows us to capture detailed images of the Earth's surface from space. It's like having a bird's eye view of the entire planet. This perspective has been instrumental in tracking deforestation, identifying new habitats, and documenting the impacts of climate change. It's a game changer, allowing us to monitor the health of our planet in real time and at a global scale. Now let's turn our attention to genetic sequencing. This is another groundbreaking tool in our biogeographical toolkit. By decoding the DNA of different species, we can trace their evolutionary histories, understand their adaptations, and even predict their future survival. It's like being able to read the autobiography of a species, written in the language of genes. These modern tools have led to some fascinating findings. For instance, we've identified areas of the planet that are teeming with unique species. These biodiversity hotspots, as they're called, are home to a disproportionately large number of species that are found nowhere else. They're the Earth's biological treasure troves, and they're critical for conservation efforts. Yet, despite these advancements, biogeography is far from being a finished puzzle. Each new discovery only seems to raise more questions. How do species adapt to changing environments? How do they migrate across vast distances? What drives the formation of new species? The list goes on, but that's the beauty of science, isn't it? It's a never-ending journey of discovery, and with every step we take, we deepen our understanding of the world around us. Modern biogeography continues to shed light on the mysteries of life on Earth, and with each new revelation we're reminded of the intricate interconnectedness of life and our place within it. So, how is biogeography relevant to our lives today, you may ask? Well, it's more than just a fascinating academic field, it has real-world applications that can affect us all. Firstly, biogeography is essential in predicting the effects of climate change. As our planet warms, species are forced to migrate to cooler areas, often towards the poles or higher altitudes. By understanding the geographical distributions of species and their preferred climates, biogeographers can predict these migration patterns. This information can help us prepare for shifts in ecosystems, from changes in agricultural pests to the spread of disease vectors like mosquitoes. Secondly, biogeography plays a crucial role in conservation efforts. By studying the geographic distribution of species, we can identify areas of high biodiversity, often called biodiversity hotspots. These regions are crucial for conservation, as they harbor a vast array of unique species. By determining these hotspots, we can target our conservation efforts more effectively, ensuring that we protect as many species as possible. Furthermore, biogeography can aid in the restoration of degraded ecosystems, by understanding what species used to inhabit an area and their relationships with the environment, we can reintroduce species and restore ecosystems more effectively. This can help bring back lost biodiversity and improve the health of our planet. In addition, biogeography can also help in the planning and management of protected areas such as national parks and reserves. By understanding the geographical distribution of species, we can design these areas in a way that maximizes their effectiveness in protecting biodiversity. Finally, biogeography can also influence policy decisions. By providing valuable insights into how species distributions may change due to climate change or habitat destruction, it can inform policies on land use, conservation, and climate change mitigation. So you see, biogeography is not just about understanding where species live and why, it's about using that knowledge to predict future changes, aid conservation efforts, restore ecosystems, manage protected areas, and inform policy. Biogeography is more than just an academic field, it's a tool for safeguarding our planet. Today, we've taken a quick journey through the world of biogeography. We embarked on a trip back in time tracing the historical roots of this fascinating field. We discovered how early observations shaped our understanding of life's distribution on our planet. Venturing further we delved into the theories and principles that underpin biogeography. We explored concepts like endemism, speciation and plate tectonics, 
and how these pieces fit together to form the biogeographic puzzle. Then, we looked at modern biogeography, observing how technology and new research methodologies are pushing the boundaries of our knowledge. We also saw how biogeography isn't just academic, it's practical too. From conservation efforts to predicting the impacts of climate change, we learned about the many applications of biogeography. As we continue to explore and understand our planet, the field of biogeography will undoubtedly continue to evolve and reveal new insights into the wonders of life on Earth. If you enjoyed this video please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.